Hey everybody, and after quite a while we are back with a new video detailing the new changes that are coming with V-Ray 6. Now, in this video we're going to take a look at the new things and new features that V-Ray 6 uh, brings, as well as the things that we, it already had but it improved upon. So let's take a uh, closer look. First thing we can notice is that on the left side of our window, we have a new row of uh, icons and these are a bit changed. So they uh, pretty much do the same thing as the previous ones, but their look is a bit more minimalistic. And we have all the V-Ray um, icons here, but also we have a new add-in over here which this one is for the chaos scatter and this is a new feature we're going to talk about this thing as well but for now we're just going to dock it over here now i'm going to start off with uh, the most basic changes they've done and that is going to start with the uh, visual frame buffer or the v-ray frame buffer now when you open it like this you know, generally you don't see any changes from the previous version but the changes are actually scattered within here so the first place where we can find some of the new additions to this is where we go over to the create layer so if you click over here at the bottom you're going to see this new addition it's called proportion guide now what this does it uh, it actually replaces a script i used to use on the previous version and the script looks something uh, like this I'm going to open up the previous and it's an overlay script so what this script does is just uh, allows you to have uh, some helpers so when you're doing your composition you know exactly where uh, which uh, things are in your scene you have a central cross golden spiral golden triangle ratio diagonals rule of thirds and all of these different things well you no longer need this script because now in here with this proportion guide you basically get this same thing so you have the rule of thirds you can have the diagonals golden ratio center cross custom grid and all of these have uh, options in them that you can change uh, whatever um, you want for it you can change the color you can change the line width and this is fairly helpful and even the last one which is the custom grid you can choose how many lines you want how many rows and columns so with just adding in this proportion guide you can change or you can basically substitute using that previous script that i was telling you about so i'm going to remove this and now the next thing that we also have in the v-ray frame buffer is when you go over to file now you have something uh, that I think can be very, very helpful, especially if you're doing post-production on different, uh, um, different images. So you have this batch image processing. So what it, what it does, it basically allows you to input a folder from where this thing will draw the files it needs to do the uh, image post-processing you have an output folder and then you have a layer preset now for this layer preset in order to utilize this what you need to do is once you have your layers and you've done all the post-production that you want to add you just click over here and you save the layer tree preset it will take that preset and apply it to all of the images and save them into your output folder so one in one, I think this is a very, very helpful thing, especially if you're using the frame buffer to do your post processing. And another thing that I would probably add while I'm still here is that uh, over here at the top, you have a new menu called V-Ray. And once you click over here, you pretty much have access to pretty much all of the different things you can add with V-Ray. So, a quick access menu for V-Ray has also been added. Next one, we're going to actually jump into our material editor and we're going to see what are the changes that they've actually introduced over here. Now for this one, we're going to start off with the uh, addition to a new menu over here 
called the tin film parameters. Now, the tin film par parameters is an interesting addition because it will allow us to create materials that have a thin, like this thing says, a thin film cover on the top of the surface. Now, to explain this better, what I'm going to do is just, first of all, I'm going to create one V-Ray dome light. And just so we have some lighting uh, happening in the scene, I will add uh, a HDRI map for it. And now for this one, we actually we will need to have one model. So for this, let's just create a regular sphere or we can use a geosphere. Anything works. I think a geosphere might be better here. So let's just create one, increase it upwards like this. Let me just go ahead and turn on the save frames. Change the resolution to something more manageable. Let's go with a custom a thousand by a thousand a square and Now it's going to be easier to play around with this thing. Okay, there we go and For this what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the V-Ray frame buffer and let it render in uh, real time. There we go Now what I'm going to do is for this sphere. I'm going to go ahead and apply just a material there we go like this this works and now the way that this thing works it works like i said as a thin film cover on top of the material so what i'm going to do here is first of all i'm going to change the diffuse make something black uh, make it very uh, reflective and make it very refractive now uh, we have a something looking like a crystal ball for this thing. Now, if you've worked with the previous version, if uh, you want to have a thin uh, look for this, you have the option to turn on the thin walled option. Now, once you make it like this, it starts looking like a bubble. And this can be helpful if this is uh, like something that you're going for. But now with the film, thin film parameters, we actually have uh, something else. So I'm going to turn on the uh, turn off the thin walled option. So we have something like this, and we're going to change some of the thickness here, is, which is made in nanometers, which uh, tells us that this cover is a very very thin finish. But now here's the interesting thing: if you increase the number here, the numerical number, to let's say something like 20, you can see that you're getting some color happening here. If we go by 50, again, something, but not really that visible. It's kind of hard to see what is happening. Uh, why is it? Well, the reason is that at the moment, most of this thing is being diffused by the refraction uh, index of, ref uh, of refraction. So what we need to do is we need to, first of all, I'm going to bring this back to zero. And now I'm going to turn off the IOR for the refraction. I'm going to put it down to one. But putting it like this, it bas basically made it invisible. Now, I'm going to go ahead and rotate this thing a bit more so we can see the background a bit better. All right, there we go. So now if I go ahead and increase the thickness here to, again, something like 20, now we can see something is happening in here. If I increase this over to 100, now we're getting some more color in here. I'll rise it up to 200. And now you're getting some very, very uh, interesting uh, look here. As you can see, by doing like this, it looks like a soap bubble. So by increasing or decreasing this number, you can have a different look. So this is a very simple way of achieving a look like this without having to go into a lot of uh, problems or a lot of complex solutions to get a look like this. And also what you can do is you can change the IOR here. So if you don't want to have all of the uh, all of these reflections at this angle, you can decrease the angle over here. And now you have this look only on the corners. You increase it to something higher. It goes higher. You go over one nine, you go two. And you can see that by increasing the um, angle at which you're seeing this, you're getting different colors. Now, this can be very interesting if you act, even uh, use it into a uh, 
uh, animation where you can just have this thing float around and by just changing the value from uh, one to another um, frame, you can have that transition appear on your animation, which I think can be a very cool thing. Now, before I move on, uh, there is one other thing that I want to add in here as well, is that one of the things that they've added or actually improved, they didn't add this, but they just improved it, is uh, how they do with the energy preservation mode for uh, metals. Now, namely, be, they've actually improved it in a way that uh, by default, this thing has been turned on on any new material that you might start uh, making. But if you're using an older uh, scene, you might have to actually go in and uh, turn this thing on in the console. But, uh, well, simply put, they've made it so that when you have a reflective uh, material or reflective metal, the light that is uh, reflected, it can never be greater than the light that is shone on the object, to say it uh, in a layman term. So not something you have to actively fix or turn on, but it, it's been added and it's there. Now, one of the things that I can actually also show you while I have this thing open is, uh, for example, if I open up my light here let's open it up like this turn this thing off let's just make this thing a bit smaller so we can see what is happening there we go so if i open up my uh a light my v-ray light in here now we have some new option as well and that is in the dome light if you go uh down here you have an option called finite dome now what this finite dome is it will allow you to set how far this projection from this dome will be uh basically projected so when you turn this thing on you have these options now available you have radius you have projection height and you have the ground blend and you can see that this thing changed a bit now so by moving this thing around you can see that now I'm uh, basically changing where the base of this texture is. Now, this is helpful if you want to use your uh, model to render it in an HD array without having to use a backplate. And generally, you'll know that if you're trying to use it on an HD array, what can happen is when you get closer to the edges on your screen, you might see something like this when uh, this thing starts to get rounder at the edges. So now by increasing the radius, you can see how this thing straightens down the ground. Uh, by increasing the projection height, you can uh, control it down or up. And then you have the ground blend which kind of helps you with how much the ground is going to blend together to try to mitigate this. Now, this is a cool addition, but you should, in all honesty, try to avoid using it like this. And if possible, it's always best to use the HDRIs as a source of lighting for your model and reflections, and always try to use a uh, backplate for your final render. Now, in case you don't have the backplates for uh, your HDR, HDRI that you're using, then you can try to, if by default the HDRI does not work, you can try to fix it, or well, fix it being in air quotation by playing it around with these um, values over here and hopefully get you that look that you're going for. Now, this next one, I think it's a very cool addition. And I think it might be one of, if not the best addition to this. So to show you this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete both the light that we already have. Well, actually I can hide this or turn it off. 
right here. I'm going to delete this sphere. And for this, I'm going to use uh, just a regular V-Ray uh, plane here to have a something to show. There we go. If I turn this thing on, now we have a pitch black screen because we don't have anything, uh, anything to light up our scene. Now for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the V-Ray Sun. And I'm going to click and drag out one sun. It's going to ask me if I want a environment map. Sure, let's just go ahead with this. And now let's go ahead, raise this sun up a bit. And just make sure that we don't have this uh, overburn camera auto exposure. Now. Click. Oh, but we will need to have a camera here as well. So let's just click on physical camera. There we go. And turn this thing on. And here we go. All right. So this is by default how your uh, V-Ray sky looks like when you create a, a V-Ray sun. Now, generally, when you take a look at this, it kind of looks okay if you're going for that clear midday look. But now what happens if we want to make this thing a bit more interesting? That is when your um, um, choices get a bit skewed. Namely, if you want to have a more interesting look, what happens is most of the time you need to go ahead and use a, either an HDRI image or you can use um, a texture, pretty much anything goes. But now we can make this thing a lot more interesting. Namely, well, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and just freeze my camera here so it always stays on here. There we go, just lock it here. There we go. So now, if I go into my options for the V-Ray physical camera, Everything is fine. So now I can open my V-Ray Sun and in here we have a new rollout here. We have clouds. So if by turning on clouds, now we can see that our <laughs> background or our uh, environment here, it's much more interesting. It looks much more realistic. And I actually really love this edition because by changing all of these different parameters, we can have a different look anytime. For example, by uh, changing the density to something higher, maybe 0 0.7, you can see that the clouds are now a lot bigger and they cover more of the, um, more of our scene. And just so I don't have this thing as a pink ground, let's just add it in something like grayish. There we go. So by having it like this now, uh, I have the second option here and that is cast shadows. So gra ground shadows. What this will do is once the light hits those sh uh, clouds, they're actually going to leave a shadow on the ground. And depending on how your entire uh, how your entire uh, scene is set up, this can look very very interesting. Now the thing here is that uh, by just changing the density, you're changing how much of the sky is filled up with uh, clouds. Like I told you, like if you go 0 0.3, 0 0.4, you can see that this thing uh, changes quite uh, uh, quite a bit. Now the interesting thing starts when you start playing around with the variety. If you go and put it to something like 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And the more variety you have, the less repetitive these uh, clouds are going to be. And now the interesting addition here is, for example, if I bring this thing down to zero, so let's get it down to zero. We don't have any uh, clouds. Now this serious amount, by just adding in this thing, you can see now that you have something like this. And if you amp it up to like one, you have like 
uh, a base on which you can add in your cloud. So this even breaks up that bluish look. Uh, it doesn't go any higher than one. So by just playing it like this, you can add a bit more, uh, well, break up that uniformity of the blue. So if you go to 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, uh, change the 0 0.5 again. There we go. You can also uh, choose how high this uh, these clouds are. So if we go and make them uh, lower, you can see that they look a lot bigger. If you change the thickness of them in meters, so this is 500 meters, so if we change them to like 4,000, you're gonna see that they look much more, uh, like they have much uh, bigger volume. So as you can see, this entire thing can add in a large variety. And I think that there is enough uh, to explain here to make it into its own video because again, all of these are parameters that you can change on the fly. So you, if you map them to a um, moving animation, you can pretty much have a um, time lapse in which the sky moves around, your sun can move, your lighting scenario changes, your clouds move, they can form up, uh, basically disappear, move up, down. Well, you. As you can guess it, the options are endless. So again, I think this is a very, very cool addition. And I think this might be one of the uh, best, if not the best addition to V-Ray 6. And as we're nearing the end of the new options that we're gonna cover, uh, I want to name one more uh, uh, other thing. I think it was a cool addition because I thought that in the previous version of the V-Ray 5, one of the greatest things that were uh, added in war, uh, was the addition of the uh, V-Ray decal, which kind of works similar as in uh, Unreal Engine, where you can basically take a decal projector as we have it over here, the V-Ray decal, and you can put in pretty much any um, texture you want and it's going to project it on your material. But with V-Ray 6, now the V-Ray decal is finally going to be able to project the displacement map. So this is a very helpful thing, especially if you can use these V-Ray decals as stickers and uh, basically adding in um, labels on your models that you're making. So all in all, it's going to really help out with uh, what you're uh, doing. And again, I think it's another great addition and very helpful for when you're doing a quick rendering job. Now, before we head out and finish this video, I want to uh, add just one more thing that I think might be in uh, the race for the best thing that they've uh, added in uh, in V-Ray 6 alongside with the V-Ray sky that I just showed you. And that is the addition to another um, modeling helper. And this modeling helper works in a very interesting way so to show you this what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn off uh this let's create a uh just regular plane there we go so add in a plane this works just fine mm, give it some segments let's try 25 by 25 and let's give it a few bends and twists so bend it once direction let's see all right that's gonna work just fine add in a twist we are trying to get something that's not gonna be a regular there we go that's fine another bend awesome so we have a surface that is irregular 
So now for this thing, what I want to do is we're going to add in that new modifier or the new uh, modeling modifier. And this thing is called V-Ray mesh mode right here. Now, once you do this, how this thing works is very similar to nano mesh in ZBrush. So if you ever use nano mesh, you might actually understand how this thing works. And it's actually really simple. All you need in order for this thing to work is you have to have a um, surface on which you want to scatter something. And then you need to have some sort of a geometry. In this case, I'm just going to make a few circles. So maybe something like this. Uh, make sure it's renderable. And by just doing it like this, if I go ahead, make it so it's here. Let's add in another one like this. And let's select this. Hold on. Oh. There we go. 90 rotate this thing 90 like this 90 like this move it back to here just like this for example uh, i've created a simple model and now we can use this model over here click on add and all of a sudden you're going to see that this thing has appeared here now nothing changed per se because you're not seeing anything but what happens is this thing will be visible once you're rendering so now as you can see all of th this geometry that we have over here is being projected onto our um, onto our surface over here now, the thing here is that uh, generally when you're making something like this, you want to create geometry that is stylable. In this case, I just created this really quickly so you can see. Now you're changing the tiling here. You're going to see that this thing uh, appears. You change the tiling in the V and this thing uh, changes like this. So this is not a texture. This is actual geometry, but it's very quick to render and does not boggle down your entire system by doing so. So just like I said, very similar to how ZBrush deals with nano mesh, this N mesh mod for V-Ray can be used for on surfaces that are uneven or even even surfaces where, where you have uh, geometry that is tileable. And by just changing these uh, options over here, you can reduce or increase the number of tilings on the U and the V thing. You can uh, change the rotation of uh, the geometry. You can offset it. And pretty much this gives you the option to do a lot of different things and make this thing a very, very interesting addition to your modeling um, arsenal. And as you can see, even with light, it interacts just like if this is geometry. And the good thing over here is that you can also choose to have the texture being uh, added from uh, a material, or it can even take the UV mapping from the uh, model. So by just changing the mesh UVW mapping here or use mesh IDs, you can change uh, what kind of material you, you want to have added on uh, this thing. So from what I can see, we've been going on for almost half an hour right now. And there are a few more things that we can uh, cover, but I think I'm going to make them into their own respectable videos because those are a couple of cool things that uh, do do basically deserve to have them explained in a bit more detail so for now i hope you guys had fun you managed to learn something new uh, managed to get some ideas what's coming with the v-ray uh, 6 uh, again if you would like to support me you can always click the join buttons and the direct links will be in the description below 
And as always, the most helpful thing you can do is just click the like and the subscribe button, leave a comment below in the video. And again, I would like to say thank you very, very much for watching. And I will see you all in the next videos. Bye-bye.